this we're trouble. back. Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillian. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box, and thus became his own final victim. Lillian, according to her own statements, then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended before hiding in other parts of the opera house. Just like a As movie. for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the opera house and was thus ignorant of these happenings. From this reconstruction of events, we can conclude that Linny, the accused, is in fact innocent. While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately, this case, at least, can be handed over to the Oratrice to make the final decision. As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. <laughs> Great work, partners. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Let's not set up for you just yet. Next, I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the primordial sea in Linny's baggage? Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know. Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny, but you, yes? I... Uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! Unless you want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town. I... I was just following orders. We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-ups said this was the best opportunity to do so. And now that your plan has fallen through, and the secrets of the water have been revealed, you have become a liability to said higher-ups, yes? Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know and seek the protection of the guards. Yes, I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the boss we're talking about, the... <gasps> what? He turned to water. And now he can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. I shouldn't have expected any less of them. An outrageous act. All present, please submit to inspection immediately. However, nothing is found on this scene, of, scene apart from liquid behind the right. eye. So, we're just going back now? The problem seems to have them solved for now. We're not needed here anymore. That's true, but... <coughs> Traveler, Paimon! Oops, sorry guys. Please wait. I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end. Even after you learned that I'm a member of the Fatui. I just didn't wish to see anyone be falsely accused. I just want to be sure that we're square. I guess. But regardless, I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. I didn't approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. I've spoken to you as myself, just plain Linny, this entire time. 
As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That's all. That was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then, too. The Knave? The one who controls the House of the Hearth? She's your father? That's right. And since we're here, I was wondering... Would you mind hearing a story? It's about my past. Back when our parents first died, Lynette and I were left wandering the streets. To survive, I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing tricks. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner, and we began to perform magic tricks there. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular, and we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from for a time. But I didn't want my sister to remain a street rat together with me forever. Before long, an aristocrat came to me and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my performances. So you went from orphans to nobility just like that? That was how we felt at first, too. As if fate was on our side and we could say goodbye to those painful days. But I gradually discovered that while we were called foster children, he was really after my talent for magic tricks. He would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention, which he would then use to expand his social circles. That doesn't seem too bad either. Better than roaming the streets at any rate. <laughs> it took a while for me to realize just how dark his heart really was. After one particular performance at a banquet, I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that noble's bedroom and asked him about her whereabouts. The answer he gave me was, She caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant is, yes? Oh no. So he was gonna... <sighs> but wouldn't Fontaine's laws deal with such people? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care. And they have their ways of escaping the eye of the law. Villains. <sighs> so what happened after that? I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person and hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards, and made my way in, all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood, and the knave standing there in the darkness. So, she'd already taken care of that guy. That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm, and had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement, all of them orphans. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. The House of the Hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed, betrayal shall never be permitted here. I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles. But she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back our freedom. Oh, so that's how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. It's all in the past, though. The knave is gone. It's after the nose, isn't she? She has her own plans. She has gained permission from the Saritza to first use the Gnosis's power when she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. So, she believes in that prophecy too? That's right. The whole House of the Hearth is currently working to combat that crisis. Today's case has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. All of us house members here, Lady Arlecchino herself included, are from Fontaine. We won't give up on defending our homeland. To us orphans, the only connection we have left to this world, apart from our family, 
is our homeland. So, from small deeds like distributing magic pockets, to huge schemes like stealing a Gnosis, everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy. I'm sorry, but I still can't completely trust you. It's all right, I understand. The only thing I can do is relate all this to you. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the house, I have never stopped making my own decisions, and that I believe what I'm doing is right. If you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my best to help you, as plain Linny. I understand. Goodbye. I love the Traveler's character. Such a cool character. Sorry guys, I gotta see this treatment. Uh, and I pressed it, my dumb ass pushed it too fast so I couldn't read it. Hey there. What was with the disappearing act you pulled right as the trial ended? Were you looking for us, Nadia? Well, this whole thing isn't exactly over, is it? I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the serial disappearances case, though. Don't you think so, too? Well, I... I'm sorry, Navia. Huh? What's wrong, my dear partner? I was really only trying to defend Linny. I wasn't necessarily looking into serial disappearance, the serial disappearance case. Besides, are you sure we're the ones who can crack a case that's been cold for decades now? And given that there's new evidence from the trial, there should be a trail of breadcrumbs for the Hydro Archon's people to follow now, right? Ah. I see. Well, I won't lie. I'm a little shocked to hear that from you. But I suppose you are just travelers who have only arrived in Fontaine after all. Sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Don't say that, Navia. Ah, and we were having so much fun investigating with you, too. It was like having new waters flowing into a stagnant mire, causing new hope to spring forth and the reflection in the murk to become clearer. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm a bit prone to nostalgia. Don't mind me. Wait, shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as partners? Huh? Do we really? to get that formal? Uh, well, guess you really did treat us as partners, huh? Well, I'd just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way there are no regrets later. Anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too much of your time. Well, if you say so. Let's go have that meal then. You don't have to twist Paimon's arm if Boss Navi is treating Kim Paimon in! Oh, wonderful! In that case, why don't we return to the Court of Fontaine and head to the Hotel de Boer? I believe we'll make it just in time for dinner. All right then, let's have our farewell meal! Act 1 complete. <laughs> Offerings to the Fountain of... <laughs> so guys, Mr. Orange here, and I'm back with Act 2 a fontaine i hope you guys enjoyed act one i really enjoyed it i couldn't wait to play again but i had things to do so i had to make this into another episode so i hope you guys are here to enjoy some awesomeness because i am and i hope you are too because traveler he was a boss People, people may not like it, how his attitude was, but I feel like he was 100% justified. But if you guys want to see the last episode of Act 1, um, I'll leave it in the description so you guys can see what's up. We'll see if you like it or not. Anyway, let's get to it, guys. Hmm. 
I came here several times with my father when I was little, but stopped eating here as often after growing up. I hope the food here will be to your taste. Oh, don't worry. We haven't eaten at a hotel like this in a while. <laughs> Paimon's getting excited already. When did we ever eat at a hotel? Am I tripping? I'm trying to think in the back of my head. Oh, maybe in Sumeru where we had that little that little cabin. You count that as a hotel? I I, I guess so. <laughs> oh, in that case, I'll go order for us first. Please wait here a moment. Ooh, everything looks so good. People in Fontaine sure know how to enjoy life. Why, of course. Go ahead. Try Damn, to garlic bread. Food's good. I'll make a group reservation for Look the at that. Spina di Rosa Look at that turkey time. stick. I'm not okay with the other one, guys. Look at that turkey stick. That that's next to Paimon. No way she's finishing that. Look at that, bro. Those those garlic breads, man. I could eat one of those, and I'd be full. And I'm, I usually have a big appetite. No way you guys are finishing that. Is that the gravy right behind the garlic bread? No way. No way. You guys are fat. I'm joking. <laughs> Can't say that in 2023, but you know. <laughs> and if it's not? Well, uh, then I'll still bring everyone. Albeit with only one dish per table. Yeah. Sure have your own way of doing things. Oh, we called this a farewell meal, but we could also treat it like a victory feast, right? We did just win that case after all. It's certainly worth celebrating. It was a pleasure working with working with you. Oh, true. Very true. In that case, boss, we'll have another two dishes. Huh. Paimon didn't mean that you had to order even more food. <laughs> Speaking of cases, do you think that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances will get caught soon now that this has all happened? And they're eating dessert? No way. How are you guys not throwing up? This is the this is cartoon and anime logic. How? How are you guys not full or anything? I would have died after eating that garlic bread. Well, we've certainly taken a big step forward, but I feel that's about it. We know that there's an organization that means to dissolve these young women, but we still don't know what they are really after. If it hadn't happened right in front of us, Paimon wouldn't have ever believed that a person could be dissolved like that. <laughs> right? Yet it was because this was such a preposterous notion that the investigation could never really move forward before. Ugh. If only that guy could have finished speaking! We were so close to hearing who was behind it. In such investigations, even the smallest step can seem like a yawning chasm if the trail of clues is cut off. To be honest, I don't have high hopes for any follow-up that the authorities might conduct. It's not that I don't have faith in their ability, it's just that a different perspective is required in some matters. It's easy to go against and deceive a single, narrow perspective. A shift in thinking is required at such times in order to produce a breakthrough. Which I is agree. Exactly why the Spina di Rosula exists. Those highfalutin folk are not all-knowing. That's why we exist. To seep into the cracks where filth falls through. Where their watch fails them. That's the kind of problems we solve. Hmm... Seems Paimon thought things were simpler than they actually are. <sighs> it's all right. Well, this was supposed to be a farewell meal, so I doubt you have further interest in this business, right? Let's talk about something else. Like, uh, what are your future plans? We wanted to ask the Hydro Archon for some information, but we haven't had much opportunity to do so. That's true. We didn't have a chance to speak to her after the trial ended. It didn't really seem like the right time or place to do it anyway. Hmm. I see. So, your primary objective, which has been foiled so far, was to have a chat with the Hydro Archon. 
Yes, ma'am. There's a long line of people waiting to meet Lady Farina. I suspect you'll be waiting for quite a while, considering that you missed your chance today. Yeah. We've heard that she's super popular here in Fontaine, and that it'll be tough getting any of her time. Hmm. Well, would you consider some more, uh, unique ways? Perhaps even methods of, uh, let's say, questionable legality? Guess that's Spina di Rosula's boss for you. Chock full of sketchy ideas. Well, what did you have in mind? Well, one way would be to infiltrate a performance troupe at the Opera House, only to abandon your act at the play's climax and ask to speak to her after the performance. I'm sure Lady Farina would be eager to see the ending, and would agree in order to finish watching the play, don't you think? Uh, could you suggest something a little more practical? This plan seems pretty hard to pull off. We'd have to go learn how to act, and acting's really hard. <sighs> Alright, here's another. Find a way to conceal yourselves under her bed. Then, wake her up in the dead of night and demand answers. Don't let her go back to sleep until she answers all your questions. Are you crazy? You want us to get killed? We haven't seen her, uh, Lady Farina's powers yet, but she is an Archon. So, let's not test her. And she still has her Gnosis. So, let's not test that, please. Forget that theory. I can personally testify that this one works. When I'm sleepy... I'll do anything as long as I can finally get some sleep. Uh, that might work, but that's not really the problem. The problem is we don't want to get ourselves arrested. Huh, valid point. I overlooked that part. I was just thinking about leveraging a person's desire for sleep. How can you overlook something like that? <laughs> all right, all right, no more joking around. Huh, perhaps you could... Oh, I don't know. Cut the line when she's on a break. You did defeat her in court, clearing citizens of hers from false accusations. False accusations she had nearly upheld personally. I imagine that she feels quite ashamed about the whole thing. You mean that if we catch her while she's on a break, she might be too embarrassed to refuse? Oh, that does make some sense. It's worth a try. Would someone with her personality really feel shame? Why don't we give it a try after this meal? You know, strike while the iron is hot and all. Huh? Paimon, did you drink my Fanta? Uh, was this your drink? <laughs> Sorry about that. Paimon wasn't really paying attention and the cup was right next to Paimon. Would you like to order another? No, it's fine. We're just about done here. All right. Honestly, Paimon wouldn't recommend Fanta anyway. It tastes kind of salty and icky. Fanta. Mm, I, gotta, I gotta look that up and see what it is. If it is, if I find it, I'll put a put it up on the screen so you guys can know what it is as well. I have to. I have to agree. My drink also tasted that way too. Is that so? Well, in that case, we'll have to blacklist the Fanta here, then. If we're all finished eating, then I'll go pay. Yeah, we're stuffed. Thanks for the treat, Nadia. Yes, thank you. Oh, so full. Paimon can barely float anymore. You could try... Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, just maybe walking. Uh, I don't know. Or you could try folding a little lower. That is another thing you could do. Nah, that would be so normal. You know, like you. What are you trying to, are you trying to say, Primal? You think you're special just because you can fly? Mm, I guess so. I guess, I guess you're kind of special. I haven't seen anybody that can fly yet. So, count yourself lucky. Hmm. As for expenses this month, we're left with... Huh. Hey, Navia! What are you doing over there? Oh, nothing, nothing. 
It was just a meal, you know? Nothing the Spina di Rosula can't cover. <laughs> D dang. We really ate her out of house and home. Why did she order so much then? I guess she really wanted to impress us or something. Or really say thank you. I don't know. Seems this was pretty tough for her. That was pretty. That was a pretty pricey meal. All oh, thanks to Paimon. <sighs> Let's get ready to try to meet the Hydro Archon again. Bye, Navia. <sighs> so this is goodbye, huh? Well. If you do encounter any other trouble in Fontaine, you're always welcome to contact the Spina di Rosula. I'll give your requests the highest priority. Thank you. Uh, in any case, I wish you smooth sailing. I'll see you again, partner. See ya! As light rain falls without reason. This. Vache, are you my dear Vache? No, wait. You seem to be someone else. Do you know Vache? Do you know where my love is? I. I'm afraid not. I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm. Wait. Who am I? I'm very sorry. I. Fear I do not know. My memories feel like they have been washed away like a flood. So many fragments dissolved amidst the tide, never to be recovered. How much have I lost? How many things that I once held dear while on land have I since forgotten? You were once human? Yes, that is what I was once. But now, I am but the consciousness of one who has lost their form. You lost your form? I do not know how I came to be like this either. I only vaguely remember being covered in light blue water. And then all grew dim. Light, light blue water? Could it have been... Could she be one of the girls who were dissolved? <sighs> I also remember going to many places. I loved adventure, loved exploring places of peril. No matter where I went, Vache would go with me. I knew how dearly he loved me. And I also loved him equally as much. But now, we can no longer go back. The pain of such parting. I never knew how heavy it could be. So you need me to find him? No. Our reunion no longer has any meaning. There is no 
way for us to create any new memories. The thought of me gives him no sorrow. So let it lie forgotten beneath the waters. If you meet Rashi, tell him not to look for me. Tell him to move on. That is the only thing I still remember. I believe it'll be hard for him to forget you. Perhaps that is so. As I was submerged in the waters, losing consciousness, I saw Vache above the surface. His eyes were filled with such sorrow, such longing. If only I could have comforted him, told him that I did not suffer. Indeed, I had felt a great warmth. That means... Vache was a witness to the fact that you were dissolved. Is that what you call it? Dissolving? If anything, I consider it a form of release. It was a state of neither fear nor frenzy, with only an endless peace, like the water still surface. I could also liken it to being a thirsty person who drinks water for the first time and only then sees how they have lived for so long in a world of endless want and anxiety. It seems that after the bodies dissolve, some measure of caution that still remains. I think I hear your companion. It's time for you to go, I think. I don't hear shit. I hear nothing. Is that Paimon? Ah, right. I wonder how much time has passed in reality. Farewell, then. I am glad that you were able to sense my presence. Remember, if you see Vache, tell him not to seek me out any longer. of Gardamax. I should thank you for lending us your sword there, Clorand. But before I do so, could you explain how you managed to show up here? I... followed you. It seemed to me that danger has followed you more closely as of late. I believe that following someone without their knowledge is actually called stalking, is it not? Mr. Callus's last wish was for me to ensure your safety, and I will not betray his trust. He would do the same. Were he alive today? Do not speak of my father! Sorry, Demoiselle. I was not strong enough. Thank you for your aid, Miss Corand, but do keep an eye out for your manner of speech. I believe we all wish to avoid unnecessary emotional harm. Sorry, I did not consider your feelings. Whatever. 
What else do you know? How did you come to the conclusion that I'd be in grave danger? I doubt I know much more than you. But I believe that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances is very powerful. Your performance tonight will almost certainly attract their attention. Huh. I'm sure they've known about me. To be honest, I'm shocked it's taken them this long to act against me. And what about these Gardamax? I thought only those associated with the Maison Guardianage could control them. None of these mecha have serial numbers. I was sure to check a moment ago. They are not the ones used by the authorities to enforce the law. I can only conclude that some powerful or wealthy party must have obtained them via illegal means. Deploying them as a private force of sorts. What? Your point being that they're out of Spina di Rosula's league then? Yes. Be careful. And do not act rashly. I will continue investigating no matter what. We will bring the truth to light. That's my father's true last wish. Regardless, thank you for your help today, Clarand. But if you get any ideas, tell me first. I don't much appreciate being followed. I do not think that they'll strike again anytime soon. So I shall stop following you. Good day, all. Right. I suppose that's the best news we've gotten today. Demoiselle, I believe that Miss Clorand was being sincere with you. If we tried, we could attempt to thaw relations a little. I know, I just... She's... <sighs> what just happened? Who was that? Champion duelist named Clorand who came out to save us too. We got lucky there. Paimon probably couldn't have fought them off otherwise. Oh, so you're a fighter now, Paimon? Thanks for the rescue, Navia. I really appreciate it. You saved my life. Oh, <laughs> come now. Forget all that polite talk. That wasn't really a farewell meal we had back there. Not for me, anyway. In truth, I hope that every meal we have together shall be a victory feast. As such, we're still partners. There's no need to thank me. It will take 50 years for me to match Demoiselle's magnanimity. If it were me, I would have joined the Spina di Rosula on account of her goodwill long ago. <laughs> All right, you two. That's enough. Actually, Navia, how did you know that we were in danger? You sure did show up in the nick of time. Well, to be honest, you're the one who tipped us off, Paimon. Huh? Really? Paimon contributed somehow? Ooh, Paimon's even more amazing than she thought! Yes, all thanks to you grabbing my drink by mistake. Uh, how did that help? After we parted ways, I was on the way back to one of our bases when I suddenly thought of what you said. That the Fanta tasted kind of salty and icky? Wait, do you mean that it tasted strange as well? But I couldn't understand. I couldn't be sure. Fanta only comes in sweet flavors. So how could it have tasted salty? The color of the drink, if I recall, had also been a bit off. So the Fanta had been spiked with water from the Primordial Sea? Yes, so if you hadn't drunk that cup for me... Spina di Rosula is preparing the grandest of awards for you as we speak for saving the boss. Huh? Really? Fortunately, Paimon and neither, neither of us... Fortunately, Paimon and neither of us are from Fontaine. Otherwise, we would have been water. H2O. I sent people to Hotel de Boer to investigate, but whoever did this left no trace at all. That's when I figured out that you might be in danger and hurried here as quickly as I could. But why would they go after us too? All we did was defend Linnean Court and help clear his name. Oh, now 
we're caught up in this mess too, aren't we? Well, you did foil a plan that they were probably pretty proud of, and almost got their name in the process. Speaking of which, did anything strange happen when you drank the primordial seawater? Well, it can't be a coincidence that the Traveler fainted just now. He said that he heard that voice calling for Vashe again. Oh, and this time Paimon heard it too! But it was real faint. Does this situation have to do with the primordial seawater then? According to Lynette, the ability to hear voices like that has to do with one's sensitivity to the hydro element. Does that mean that the primordial seawater raises someone's sensitivity to hydro when it's used on people who are not from Fontaine? That doesn't sound like too much of a bad thing, to be honest. I also gained some new intel. New intel? While you were out cold? Uh, well, let's hear it, shall we? The voice in the fountain belonged to one of the missing women. A person named Bache was a witness when she was dissolved. Oh, that is important. To Erin by what happened while you were connected to Ocean's consciousness. That name doesn't ring a bell. I suppose he hasn't set forward as a witness in court lately. Since he saw that young woman dissolve, he was at least at the crime scene. But he never gave testimony or any information regarding people dissolving in the primordial seawater. Could he have been threatened? If he's still alive, we should try searching for him. Yes. Thank you. This is very important information indeed. We will continue to investigate. Alright, partner. By we, you mean us too, right? Oh, you mean you'll help us investigate? Well, you did say that our farewell meal didn't really count. That means we're still partners, right? And besides, we're in this now whether we like it or not. You're not gonna let those people who targeted us get off the hook so easily, are you, Traveler? Messing with us will cost them. This rule provoked to be a, their biggest mistake. Demoiselle, do try not to look quite so pleased. You are the face of Spina di Rosula, after all. Yo, look at her face. No way. <laughs> no way. Oh, that is funny. <coughs> you talk too much. <sighs> well, in that case, let's head back to one of our bases, shall we? I'll arrange accommodations for you. We also have some plans to go over, and hopefully we can deepen our bonds as partners. But we'll take that one step at a time, I guess. Don't worry, you two. With us around, our base is definitely secure. It's right up ahead, but let's make sure we weren't followed first. I've been keeping watch, Demoiselle. I haven't spotted anyone suspicious thus far. Huh. Very good. But let's not let our guard down for now. I shall find rooms for our respected guests. Thank you, Malus. Now, let's continue, Traveler. Sewers. All oh, the music changed. Nice, nice. So, uh, this is 
is your base? It's not quite what Paimon imagined. Your accommodations have been arranged. Under the present circumstances, I can confidently say it's the best we have. Thank you. Well, so much for my expectations. <laughs> well, our funds have been a little tight lately. After all, we don't allow illegal or unethical profiteering. In fact, our funds often come from citizenry who support us. Seems like it's tough times for everyone. But if you have the support of the people, that does sound like it's worth it. <sighs> to be honest, our financial situation was a lot better back when my father was in charge a few years ago. <sighs> I'm afraid I'm not quite his equal. Your father... He was the previous boss of Spina di Rosula, right? How did he... Uh, Demoiselle, if you'll allow me to explain. Uh, no. I I'll explain it myself. I suppose I couldn't run from this topic forever. And, as partners, this is something I hope they can understand. My father's name is Callus. Yes, the same one they call Callus the Unfaithful in the streets. Three years ago, he was accused of murdering his own friend. But he chose a duel to defend his honor instead of standing trial. He died in the duelist's ring. Oh no. But I do not believe my father was a murderer. I'm sure he was set up. At the time, I believed that if he only stood trial and was duly investigated, something amiss would crop up and prove his innocence. But strangely, he not only requested the duel himself, but rumor has it that even after being seriously injured, to the point where he could be deemed as having lost the duel, he refused to surrender, determined to die in the arena. <laughs> Three years later, I still don't understand why he did that. How could he protect his honor if he's dead? <laughs> if anything, he gave up his chance to defend himself. It does seem quite odd. You have any clues as to why? The closest piece of info I have is that my father had been investigating the serial disappearances case at the time of his death. Ah, so that's why you're so determined to get to the bottom of that case. That's right. I've also tried to investigate the murder my father was implicated in. But I haven't found a single new clue in my countless reviews of the investigation records. However, I believe that if the murder case is related to those behind the disappearances, they must know something. I must know what really happened. Was my father coerced? Framed? Even if he really did kill his friend, I must get to the truth. <sighs> if only he'd been more open with me when he was still alive. He even hid the fact that my mother died due to complications when giving birth to me. And now... Here I am, investigating his death. <laughs> you really are a handful, aren't you, Papa? Seeking the truth. What a sake of your family. You know, we're quite alike in this regard. Demoiselle, please. If there is anything I can do, anything at all. I also will never believe that Master Callus murdered anyone. There are none whom I respect more than the two of you, Demoiselle. Master Callus did so much good in life, yet all it took was one murder case for him to be dubbed Callus the Unfaithful. Even our supporters decreased greatly due to that incident, hence our uh, strained finances at present. Wait, if Callus was such a good man, wouldn't people at least be a little suspicious when he was accused? Uh, no. Perhaps people just revel in that kind of drama. It's not something exclusive to people from Fontaine, really. Everyone's like that. People love watching the evil turn over a new leaf, but they also enjoy watching good people fall into an abyss from one slip-up just as much. Wait, how could... Uh, so never mind. Sound like Twitter. If Callus was really falsely accused... One mistake. We have to find the truth. He didn't deserve to have that happen to him. What mistake on Twitter, man? Or what mistake you had in your past? People will bring that up. Ain't that crazy? 
Uh, there is one other thing. Master Callus' opponent in the duel was Ms. Clorand. Oh, her? Well, then, isn't that as good as saying that she was the one who killed him? No wonder that move was a little strange between the two of you. Yeah, that's not the sort of thing that you can just let go and move on from. Miss Clorand has always placed great emphasis on the honorable nature of the duel. If her opponent doesn't yield, she will not stop either. She knew Master Callus beforehand and greatly respected him, but seeing how he was resolute in the arena, there was only ever one choice she could have made. It's not that I don't understand her at all, but I... I just can't deal with this yet. Don't worry, Navia. Paimon knows how you feel. You don't have to force yourself to do that. Afterward, Ms. Koran told us that at the start of the duel, Master Callus requested that she ensure Demoiselle Navia's safety. Then that indicates that he intended to die in that duel. Yes, that is our understanding as well. <sighs> oh, Papa. What madness drove you to ask the person who killed you to take care of me? All right, anyway. That's the information I wanted to share with you. Even if it did sound like I was just complaining towards the end. Oh, it's all right. I understand how important this is to you. Uh, thanks. You two should go and rest. This was quite a day after all. Yeah! I would eat. Please, relax and get some sleep. We will ensure you rest soundly. Rest in your room. Whether it be responsibility for Spina di Rosula or Master Callus's death, it all landed on Dimoiselle's shoulders so suddenly. This won't do. I must become stronger. Peaceful night passes under the Spinadu Rosula. De Poisson. It's Spina de Rosula's place of origin, and where we have our headquarters. There's not much for them to do here at the moment. Paimon kind of gets the feeling that you're just trying to get them off your back. But never mind that. When did you get back? Were you waiting here the whole time? No, I just returned after going out for a while. I did some investigating yesterday regarding the name Vache. Wait, so you didn't sleep at all? <laughs> How could I after having such critical new evidence appear? Uh, guess Paimon wasn't speaking for everyone just now, huh? Uh, unfortunately, this name seems to have been wiped from existence. It doesn't seem to have a match anywhere. I suspect that those behind this have already taken steps to hinder an investigation from this angle. But... That does prove that this Vache person is a key witness in the incident. Does that mean we're too late, though? No. There is one ray of hope. One place in Fontaine that they would find almost impossible to threaten. No matter how much they wanted to. And that is the archives kept by Chief Justice Nouvellet. A place where detailed files on all the cases in recent years are kept. If the Oceanet you met is one of the young women who went missing recently, we should be able to find some related information there. So Nervalette maintains an archive of case files? Hey, little girl, stop running. Guess that's the hardworking Chief Justice for you. In that case, let's go talk to him, shall we? Um... Hmm? Aren't you coming along, Navia? Did you get tired? <sighs> No, it's nothing. Let's go see the Honorable Chief Justice. Oh. 
The place we're going is called the Palais Marmonia. The office of the Chief Justice is on the fourth floor. Nice, nice. Yeah, I just want to get that. I want to get that away. Sorry, guys. State your business here. The Chief Justice is presently occupied with official matters. Huh. This place does look pretty heavily guarded. Guess that proves that Nervalet's files are really secure. Hey, don't you recognize us? Huh? Who are you? Just to be clear, <clears throat> I don't care who you are or who you might be related to. Our rules make no exceptions. See? They've got great discipline, too. Yep, yep. Hyman can tell. If you're here just to crack jokes, I can point you towards the exit. Unlike some, we're busy. So please leave if you don't have a reason to be here. Uh, no, no. What I meant to say is, shouldn't you remember us from a few days ago? We were at the trial of the great magician Linny. Oh, oh, yes, I remember. I read about it in the Steambird. You, you must be Linny's attorneys. It's all coming back to me now. We're here today to report and archive some information on a follow-up case. Huh, is that even a thing? Hmm. Of course. Don't worry. We're here on official business. You can trust us. All right, then, I'll let you through. The Chief Justice is just inside. Ah, oh, thanks so much. I think it's so cute. I'm not gonna lie. See, Dean. Oh, there's no. It can't really see me. Please come in. Um, sorry to barge in, Monsieur Nervalet. We only like to get in because we didn't know any other way. It's all right. Please let me know how I may be of assistance to you. Looking for a man called Vache. He may have been an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. If we can find him, we may be able to unearth some key information on the case. Ah, I see. 
In that case, please wait here a moment while I browse through the files. Who knew that Nervalette would be so easy to talk to? Unfortunately, I'm quite certain that no one by the name of Vache has been involved in any case, criminal or civil, in the past several years. There are no records of him either in the files or in my memory. Guess that's that. So we're back to square one. Traveler, what if it was really just a dream? Is that so? All right then. Thank you so much, Monsieur Neuvillette. We'll take our leave now. Ahem. Miss Navia, I can understand how you feel. Your father, Callus, was a truly exceptional man. We deeply regret his passing. And what are you trying to say, Monsieur Novillette? Are you trying to console me? Extend your sympathy? Or just express some tendril of regret? No. You are not trying to do any of that. I can hear it in your voice. There's no emotion behind your words. You only said those things because you felt like you should. It's just like last time. After my father took his place in the duelist ring, I pushed through the guards to talk to you as a last resort. You even told me then that you thought there was something fishy with the case, yet you still allowed the duel to go ahead. In your eyes, the value of a human life is nothing compared to those cold laws you hold so dear. If you truly regret my father's death, then why didn't you call a stop to the duel? Why didn't you give me the power to stop him from throwing his life away? Why did you just let him die, despised and hated by all? Everything was hanging on a thread at that moment. Just the tiniest effort could have changed everything. There are still so many things I never got to tell him. So many questions he still owes me answers to. If you really have no heart, then just look me in the eyes. I, Navia, will show you the true meaning of regret. <sighs> I'm sorry, Miss Navia. You and my father are truly alike. You keep all kinds of things in your heart and never say a word to anyone. It's not so much that you can't feel but that you would never express anything. Oh well. In any case, everyone already knows full well the apathy of the Chief Justice. My apologies for taking my emotions out on you, Monsieur Chief Justice. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. <clears throat> Sorry guys, excuse me. That was a sad scene, though. Don't get me wrong. That was a very sad scene. Oh my gosh, I got I gotta take that out. Navia, are you okay? I'm fine. Uh, rain. It's raining. You're right. Wasn't it still sunny when we went into the building? And there shouldn't be any active trials today. How strange. Now that I think of it, on the day my father was convicted of murder, it was also raining. Rain. Hmm. What is it? Did you think of something? Your father's case, was he outside when it happened? Yeah, he was outside. It was uncovered and the rain could fall there. Why? Do you think the rain could have affected the crime scene? That thought has occurred to us before. 
We've even expanded the search area to try to account for that, but didn't find anything of value. But there was something you didn't know at the time. Oh? Wait. Uh, you don't mean... The fact that people can be turned into water. So you're saying that the true murderer could have been turned into water? And then got washed away with the rain? Yeah. And if that's what had happened, then no one would have believed your dad, even if he explained what he saw to the authorities. I really think I found a true genius for a partner. <laughs> you're completely right. How did I not connect the dots earlier? All right. Let's go to Poisson. With this new lead in mind, we'll get to the bottom of my father's case for sure. Yeah, we're gonna make progress for sure this time. Do you want to go with me now? Or do you want to head over by yourself later? We should go while the idea is still fresh. Great, let's go then. Oh, this is sick. How it, it, it just creeps into the cave. That's sick. I like that. That was a great, great scene. so surprised. While it may look like a ship, it's actually Spina di Rosula's headquarters. My father was the one who asked for it to be built like this. Perhaps our taste in exterior design is the only thing we occasionally had in common. A gigantic and glamorous ship embodies discovery, opportunity, ambition, and conquest. It symbolizes Spina di Rosula's bright and limitless future. I think I'm starting to get why you, why you like it. And Paimon thought you were bluffing when you said Spina di Rosula had a glorious past. Paimon was confused why a group with such a history would live in the sewers. But now that Paimon has seen this ship for herself, she's been convinced. Well, Poisson is where Spina di Rosula began, after all. It's our main base, our home. 